Hello there. So this is the last section for our unit on energy. This one's all about thermal energy. Our purpose is for this one, we want to know the difference between thermal energy and temperature, because these two are different. You'll find out why in a sec. We also want to solve some problems involving thermal energy. So what's the difference? Thermal energy is the total amount of kinetic and potential energy of the particles in an object whereas temperature is the average kinetic energy of the particles in an object. So one is the total, thermal energy is the total, temperature is the average. So these two are different, thermal energy is the same as heat. So question for you, which contains more heat? A pot of boiling water or an iceberg? I'll give you a sec, automatically in your head you should think which one you think that would be, and it is going to be an iceberg. The iceberg has more heat. Now that might seem weird for you. Why would a iceberg have more heat than a boiling pot of water? So let's discuss why. The thing is because the iceberg has way more particles. Remember, heat is the total amount of energy in the object. So your iceberg has way, way, way more particles. So even though each individual particle has less energy, if I totaled them all up, it would be way more than a small pot of boiling water. Now the easy question would be, which one of these has a higher temperature? The more temperature would be your boiling pot of water. The average of each particle is higher in boiling water. It's, the temperature is 100 degrees, whereas your iceberg, it's going to be zero or below. So that is the difference between heat and temperature. Heat, thermal energy, this is the total energy. Temperature, it's your average. So the amount of heat transferred into an object is found with this equation, EH or Q, it's written as both. Don't ask me why, I don't know why heat is Q, but you'll see it written as Q. This is equal to MC delta T. Again, delta being change in. So EH or Q, that's your heat, it's measured in joules. M is mass. C is something called the specific heat capacity. This is another constant. So on your formula sheet, you're given a table that looks like this. It's a list of a bunch of specific heat capacities for different objects. So you can check on there to see which specific heat refers to which thing. And delta T is your change in temperature. So this is how temperature relates to heat. There's an equation that relates to two of those together. So we got a wrinkle slug. He's desperately needing some hot chocolate. I don't know why, he just is. So he boils 75 grams of water that's initially at 20 degrees Celsius. How much heat is needed? We have our equation. Q equals MC delta T, and we have a numbers for each of these. M, that's the mass of the water, convert it into kg. C, if you look on your formula sheet, water, that is liquid, the specific heat for that is 4181.3, and my change in temperature, I'm going from 20 to boiling. You need to know that the boiling point of water is 100. I'm expecting you to know that. Plug all these numbers in, we get 25,088 joules of heat, is needed to change the temperature of the water. Let's look at one final example. This is the one I've warned you about. This is a conservation of energy problem, except now we're involving heat. We've got a boom slug that's going down a slide. He's initially at rest. At the bottom of the slide, he's moving 1.8 meters per second. If this slide is made of 9 kg of iron and all the heat from the boom slug going down is transferred into the slide, we want to know how much does the temperature of the slide increase. So notice all the heat goes into the slide. So we're still including heat in this equation. So when we do our equation for conservation of energy, notice it's similar to the last one, but I've added EH. And this is on your formula sheet. I warned you that this is coming. It's just an extra heat that I put into my conservation of energy. So in this situation, we can cancel some stuff out. First of all, it starts from rest at the top, so my kinetic energy is zero. And at the bottom of the slide, you've got zero potential energy. So I can automatically cancel out those two things. Let's plug in some equations, some expanded equations for potential energy, kinetic energy, and heat. Notice with my masses, I've got an MB and I've got an MS. The reason for this is the potential energy is from the boom slug. Your kinetic energy is also relating to the boom slug, but my heat energy, all the heat we said is going into the slide. So the equation for heat is the mass of the slide, not the mass of the boom slug. 
So this is why your masses need to be different because they're relating to different objects. From here, we can plug in numbers. I'll show one more step in between to help you with some algebra for this. And we get at the very end, the change in temperature is 0 0.0077 degrees Celsius. So it's a very small change in temperature, which makes sense. It's a big iron structure, so it's not going to change that much temperature. So there you go. That is the end of energy. It was a long unit with six sections. All of this will be coming on your test that is coming up. I know it's a lot to all put together. You've got kinetic energy, you've got potential energy, you've got thermal energy. All these energies kind of intermix together into the law of conservation of energy. And work is just a change in these, a change from potential to kinetic or from kinetic to potential or a bit of both into a bit of both. You've got all those incorporating into a whole collection of questions on energy. Alrighty, another physics movie incorrectness, whatchamacallit, for today. This one is from Live Free or Die Hard. Let's take a gander. There you go. That one's a little bit shorter clip. You keep saying, tell me what you think, but you can't tell me you're watching this on the video. Okay, let's re-watch what's going on here and what is incorrect with this. As you might have guessed, it has to do with another falling thing. Movies just can't get properly how things fall and how much things actually hurt. You might actually think that you can do more than you can. So this one, he's on the plane, the guy ejects. It's the part where he is jumping off the plane. This is going to be the problem here. So look at how high he's jumping from. Yep. Even though it's slanted, that's a huge jump. And look at his legs. He's going to land on that and yeah, his legs are done. That is not going to feel good. Even though it looks like he comes sliding, he's sliding down. I mean, that's a freeway that he's sliding down. So that's also got friction. There's no way his pants are going to survive that either. If that fall, again, that's going to hurt. He's not going to be able to walk away from that. And his pants are not going to survive the friction on that. They're either going to light on fire or just completely tear away. So, yep, superhero pants and his legs are not going to feel so good after that. Yeah.